ex-wedding photographer. Typically I saw red flags when the bride or groom is super quiet. I mean silent and just watching. One instance was a groom who barely said 10 words to anyone during the ceremony or reception. Afterwards, the bride needed everything to be perfect. I dropped off the photo bundle with them two weeks later and he was still quiet. She however complained about all of the pictures because the groom wasn't smiling enough. She wanted a discount because I couldn't make him look happy enough. I know because I did his engagement photos with his new fiancé about four years after his first wedding. His engagement photos showed him much happier. Edit, I stopped doing weddings but I do some portraits and mostly commercial and product work. He called me for a wedding quote but I had stopped doing them at that point. Photographer here, I've done a few engagement photos and weddings. Red flags. When one person is critical of the other during the shoot but then posts the photos with the caption about to marry my best friend and my soulmate. Also, when they badly photoshop themselves and their partners to appear better looking than they actually are. Green flags. A couple who can laugh together when doing awkward poses, when they're wiping sweat from their foreheads, and when something goes wrong in general. To answer a few questions, I only edit the lighting and background of photos. I have never and will never edit someone's body. Once I have been paid for my edited photos, I do believe the photos belong to the couple and they are free to tweak them any way they like. Although, I do think there is no need to edit your face body. People who are truly happy for you don't care how perfect you look in your photos. To address the wiping of the sweat, I did a photo shoot for a couple in the middle of an intense Texas summer. It was incredibly hot and humid that day and the man was sweating rivers. Him and his fiance were such good sports about it though. I've done photo shoots for brides-to-be who get extremely offended and angry when their partner doesn't look perfect. I was very happy that this particular bride-to-be just had a good time taking silly photos with her fiance. There is one particular venue that has a 100% divorce rate with our clients. It's a state park, which I have dubbed Omen Meadows. Photographer here, to me the biggest sign is the cake cutting. Some people like to smear the cake everywhere as a joke, some people don't. Usually the couple is in sync about this. They know what the other would like and they don't smush cake on the other's face if they wouldn't want that. I've seen this happen a handful of times in all of those relationships that I have kept up with have ended in a divorce. Wedding planner here. Red flags, nerves are normal but when one of the pair start doubting whether they should go through with a W-A-A-A-Y before the day. You know something isn't quite right. Green flags, they make decisions together and have each other's backs especially when family can be pressuring. Photographer here. You can tell somewhat based on how the couple treats each other on the wedding day. If they are respectful toward one another and toward me, during a day full of stress then I think that's a good indicator of being able to deal with other problems that may arise during a marriage. Wedding videographer here. I try to get to know both people beforehand, so I can work in their hobbies, unique traits into my product. A big red flag is when one person is clearly trying to change the other. I had one dude who loved poker craft beer, cigars, hanging with his rowdy friends, video games, etc. I planned a cool shoot where I had all his friends in an Old West saloon, and he sees his bride-to-be, etc. But she steps in and declares, oh, he won't be doing any of those things anymore. 
halfway through post-production after the wedding, he called and said he was getting an annulment. I wanted to say, could have told Yasuo, but I try to stay neutral. Green flags are just the opposite. Cake artist here. I had a couple come in for a tasting. Appointment was for 7 p.m., but he was late. First half hour was just her. Those horses were going to be featured at the wedding as the bride and groom would ride them to the site, a beautiful farm venue. She described in detail her self-designed medieval gown, flower wreath in her hair, embroidered shoes like some from a museum. Sounded lovely. She wanted a cake like a castle, which was a specialty of mine. The whole wedding would be over the top, but not in a cringy way. Barely says hi to her, sits down and starts telling me about his wedding. He'll ride in dressed as a riverboat gambler with a frock coat, brocade vest, string tie, big hat, gold pocket watch, and sterling silver spurs. He's fine with the castle cake, but wants to incorporate the watch in a pair of mother-of-pearl handled pistols. Picture given. I had already decided that I was not going to work with theme this year. But they were there so I brought out the samples. For the next hour they carried on two entirely separate monologues. They didn't address each other, or me, and they didn't listen to each other, or me. I made no attempt to book them that night. And when they called later in the week, I told them their date had been taken. I doubt they even made it to the wedding day. Ex-wedding photographer here. There were only a couple situations where I had doubts about the couple's future and one where I was certain. 1. I met the couple in a cafe to discuss their ideas and my services. The guy, however, was rolling his eyes and grunting at everything and I stopped trying to get him involved in the conversation after he ignored me twice. It made the girl very uncomfortable and she was apologetic of his behavior. I don't know what happened to them, as they apparently chose to reschedule their wedding and didn't hire me in the end. 2. When I asked her to arrange a meeting with a couple, she said that they didn't want a wedding, meaning they wanted to elope, and it was her initiative to celebrate it. I tried to play I want to hear bride's ideas card, but she told me the bride has no ideas. She obeys the groom, and the groom obeys Momisir, so I'll only talk to the Momisir. So I declined, I hope the girl is fine, no one deserves a controlling mill. Finally, I was a guest and a photographer at my friend's wedding. The bridesmaid was wearing a short white dress and she was chirping about her side hustle modeling for photos and catalogs. How her boyfriend saw her in so many wedding dresses he won't be surprised when she wears one too the wedding, and how she caught eight bouquets already. This will be her ninth. She talked a lot about wedding planning and stuff, but apparently there hadn't even been a formal proposal and her boyfriend, who was a guest as well, looked very annoyed and clearly wished he were somewhere else. Anyway, the bridesmaid started bugging me for photos of her and her boyfriend a week after the wedding. I told her several times that when I start editing the photos, I will do hers first. And by the time I sent her the photos, they were already broken up. Edit, Grammar Photographer here. I swear that all of the couples that have split up have smashed the cake in their SO's face. None of the nice cake couples have. Just my weird anecdotal experience. Wedding videographer here. I don't usually follow the marriage all that closely after the video is delivered. But usually you have a feeling as a neutral third party about whether it's going to last or not. While I agree with most of the stuff mentioned here, I found that the microcosm of how the couple feels about each other comes usually comes out during the cake cutting. 
If they're drinking then they've usually had a few by that point and it's a moment when everyone is watching you do something potentially awkward with your new so. Sometimes they're both having fun with it and you can tell it's cool. But most of the time you can tell that the person with cake on their face is either shocked or angry about it. Again, I don't have hard data to track results. But that's the thing that usually informs my opinion about how it's going to work out. And hash X200B. Edit, thanks for the silver. Also thanks for sharing all the stories about the cake smushes that have led to long and happy marriages. Wedding videographer. Probably when the bride got absolutely blackout drunk and started telling everyone at the party in that drunk loud whisper that she was ducking the groom's brother. Used to be a wedding planner. Red flags. Constant apologizing for their other halves behavior, attitude, lack of input from one of theme is here. Too much input from a family members. Anger, inability to make a decision and stick with it. At one wedding I didn't actually meet the groom till the day of. I just knew his name, Joseph. Edit. Also when they are very young, have a small child and or haven't been together for long. Green flags, when a couple mutually respect the other's wishes and compromise. Both present at every meeting. Friendly, and respectful of staff. When you can tell they are both relieved to see one another again and it's like no one else is. They're dot it's like an unspoken conversation with each other and makes me smile. 